I hadn't really intended making a video tonight, but as it turns out, I made a USB powered disco light type effect. And the reason that happened was because I was wanting to try uh, reflowing with a uh, solder paste and surface mount components. And it kind of, as you can see, it went horribly wrong, but it went, it's an educational experience. I know why it went wrong. So in a way, when I get to this bit, it's going to be uh, future Clive telling past Clive what's about to go wrong. However, the project was based on a cheap Chinese disco light, which basically has a matrix of uh, eight by eight LEDs and they're behind a lens and it projects patterns out and it can chase them in and out and go to the beat of music. It's a bit crap, to be honest, and it's quite annoying. <laughs> However, I modified it. When a friend was on holiday, he posted some pictures of a temple with the light shining through the windows and the stained glass was projecting the series of coloured dots and I thought that was quite nice. So I got one of those cheap lights and I made a new circuit board for it, which just had a capacitive dropper, um, smoothing and then just a matrix of LEDs that you could put a pattern into and all it does is project a static pattern onto the ground. Consumes very little power, no fan noise, nothing. Very, very efficient little light. And it was quite nice, I have to say. It worked out well. So I thought, well, to do something decent in testing this soldering, I'll rejig that circuit board design. If you wonder why it's got my logo twice on it, it's because uh, the top is designed to be cropped down if needs be, because the circuit board doesn't have to be that big. It's quite odd. It physically wedges into the case, as you'll see later in this video. But I made an array of LEDs with surface mount resistors and the whole lot are in parallel. You've got a couple of pads here to connect, or you've got these terminals, which are the ones that I will eventually connect to a USB lead. And it draws about 400 milliamps. It's got 64 green flickering, self-flickering LEDs. And the result is, as you saw from the thumbnail of this video, it's just this splatter of beams of light come out, but each one independently flickers. It looks really nice. And it's extremely low power. But, um, the project was, a, you know, it was a test of the reflowing of the soda. And the first thing I came across was I'd had this tube of soda knocking about for a while. I didn't know you're supposed to keep it chilled to stop presumably the solvent evaporating maybe. But um, I the nozzle was blocked and I squirted some out into a new syringe and tried the nozzles. It takes an awful lot of force to get this soda out through the nozzles. But I, after a lot of uh, trial and error, trying the toothpick technique and trying to squirt it on and just for some reason, the solder just doesn't stick. The paste does not stick to the copper. I thought it would really be quite gooey and you could just spread it on. It doesn't. It just lifts straight off. But um, after a while, I got the technique of applying the pressure, really pushing it down so that it compressed some air that was left in it and then it oozed out the end and then I could actually dab it on. And then I reflowed it. And because it doesn't have the solder resist to actually stop it. The solder flowed along and then the, the resistors just went all angles. You're about to see that because that's the next bit of the video. And uh, so this is where future Clive uh, tells past Clive that I'm going to have to check. There are certain things like this resistor here that it kind of shot for forward so far that it rode up on the solder but didn't fuse into it. The solder melted underneath and there were quite a few of those. But, you know, it's a learning experience. It's a start. It makes me think maybe in the future for projects like this, I'll just manually solder them in with a pair of tweezers and just reflow the solder one side at a time and get those sat in. But anyway, it's very educational and you're about to see it go horribly wrong now, followed by me making this whole project up. So, um, yes... Enjoy the video. Okay, solder paste take two. I have used solder paste this time uh, on this particular circuit board. So I'm going to see how this works. The solder paste was much harder to apply than I was expecting. So this is it heating up now. I've set it for 280 degrees Celsius. Oh, um, I can see stuff happening already. I can see quite a sudden transition here. Lots of vapour coming off. I can see the component, the solder melting and the components randomly sliding all over the place. Not necessarily where I want them to slide, but they are kind of, oh, it's quite uh, <coughs> fumy. That is actually not looking too bad. He's head lying horribly. Right, tell you what, uh, that's awful. <laughs> 
Uh, this is where the solder resist would have helped because the solder paste has gone everywhere and it's now aligned all the resistors in wonky style. But not to worry, it'll still work. Right, okay, I shall lift that off now and let it cool down and check that the solder has all flowed. Okie dokie, and I'll let you know how that went. So what is it I'm doing anyway? Well, having quite enjoyed making a panel of the flickering blue LEDs, I dug out an old design and then re-imagined it so that instead of operating at 240 volts, it operates at 5 volts and it will project. Well, let me show you one of the lights. That's the best bet. I shall just, uh, I shall just finish what I was doing there, stuff that LED in. A disco light with a lens in the front, circuit board inside, replace it with this one, and theoretically with all these sparkling LEDs it should project lots of dots onto the wall and little green beams that sparkle. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. There is only one way to find out, and that is to populate it with LEDs, solder it up and see how it goes. Now I have to say, that's the first time I've used the solder paste. My original syringe, it had sort of congealed in the tip. Apparently you're supposed to refrigerate that. Not that it's really an issue in my house, because it's always a bit cold anyway. I decanted some bit into another syringe, and it's very hard to squeeze through syringe nozzles. That's why the factories use little compressed air dosing systems. Uh, but even then, the soda was not actually sticking onto the copper the, very well. It's, it would go on and then it would just lift straight back off again. It was very frustrating. I finally got the technique of squeezing pressure on the syringe, and then as it oozed out, uh, just laying little sort of logs of it along the tracks. So I'm going to put these LEDs in and then solder them up and then we can take a look at the result. Okay, the LEDs are in. I have done a quick test. It's absolutely fine. After I'd reflowed some of the uh, resistors, which had just tilted up slightly, it's proving quite irksome. I have to say at this point in time, the temptation would be to... Uh, just solder the resistors, the surface mount resistors individually, as I did in the previous project. Although having said that, uh, once I master using solder paste properly, it's going to be a lot easier. So I've got this uh, lovely USB lead. I think this came from Poundland and it's a long lead, but interestingly, it's got much thicker power cores than the, uh, than the data cores. It's actually quite a good lead. So it will have a low voltage drop across it. And I'm soldering it in. And then I shall plug this in and show you it in its flickery glory. But then we shall put it into the light itself, I think, and see how it looks. I don't know how it's going to look. The light involved is a sort of moonflower effect. It has a lens in front of LEDs and basically projects, because these... LEDs have lenses that then actually there's another lens in front and it projects a fine point onto the wall. But because these are the flickering LEDs, let me just plug this in, in fact. How's this little power supply going to deal with it? Oh, that's ferocious. Uh, because the um, LEDs are flickering, flickering LEDs, the chips are not dead center, so I'm not really sure how that's going to work. This is looking so good so far. This could be the, the making of a disco light that actually runs in a, a USB power bank. So let's open this light and gut it out. Where is a suitable screwdriver? Is this going to work? Yes, it is. So the original form of this light, I think it's got an 8x8 matrix of LEDs and various patterns, including scrolling messages, very crude scrolling messages, because it is basically just one character wide. And uh, it's got a little switch from power supply inside, which we're ripping out. Could put a 5 volt one in instead, because this is designed to run on 5 volts. Okay, almost, almost there. Okay. So there's the power supply. Let's whip that out and take a look at it. Is it going to have good separation? I do see the opto isolator in a decent position for this one. So it might not be too bad. Oop. I like the way that uh, the, the light is that the lens is projecting an image of the overhead light. Can I focus on that? No, because it's diffused. All right, okay. It has a decent uh, Andrew tracking slot. The optimized later is in a good position. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. 
with a suspiciously small class Y capacitor, but that's okay. It looks like a generic switch mode supply. It's got a little sleeved fuse, well-spaced diodes. This doesn't look too bad. Now, that all depends, though, on how the separation of the windings is. It's missing that one thing that I really like. It's got the double insulated or triple insulated windings where the either they sleeve it or they actually have a heavy winding goes around it, but they don't seem to use that. It would take so little extra effort. Here is the LED module. Oh, and a wee fan as well. It's a bonus. I'll nick the fan as well. Uh, what we have going on to here is in... A, B, minus, and plus. I'm guessing A and B there. Maybe two is... There's going to be clock and data, and maybe a reset as well. not really sure. MD 2013108. So that's from 2013. What are these chips? I'll sure use this to magnify and find out. Oh, maybe I won't. No, they're, they're really small. One moment. Standard TTL... 74HC, is it 595D? You may be able to actually see that better. Uh, so that is driving. Basically speaking, there's a track from every single output of this to an LED. It drives the LEDs quite hard. Let's lop the cable off this. Could chop. And get this little circuit board out of the base. Ooh, floating diode. I wonder why it's got a diode floating in the air like that. Is that an extra layer of rectification? It's just, you know, they put it up there to keep it cool. It has dip switches. It's not got DMX. Unplug that. Let's unplug that. That's probably going to the fan. That's going to the microphone and the potentiometer. The potentiometer will vary the sensitivity. I'd guess this is an, it looks like an LM358 op amp, and this is the microcontroller with no number on it, which is doing all the work, and there's a little uh, crystal next to it. Pretty much what you'd expect. The diode is going to LED out. That's uh, possibly to drop the voltage to the LEDs very slightly. Or maybe it's polarity protection, maybe to drop the voltage, I'm not really sure. Okay. We don't need any of that anyway. Let's lock some more wires off. If I'd really thought of it, I would have uh, thought of a space to poke the cable through. Go through there. Well, let's get the fan out. The fan will not be needed. Much butchering is going on. So the design of this is such that if this circuit board is going to fit, it's got some arrows pointing down the way on it to remind me which way it goes in. I may have to experiment the position. I shall press that in there. I shall power it up, in fact. Maybe I'll just put the lid on loosely. Uh, because the position of that is critical to get the focal point of the lens. I'll also give the lens a clean. So I shall uh, tip all the hardware out. Give me a second here. Just bear with me as I test this. Let's plug this in to a USB power bank. I'm just going to point at the wall. Hey, that's not too bad. That is not too bad at all. Let's see if I can show you this. It projecting from a distance. If I can get it right up. Uh, and we'll take the exposure off just a wee tad. Oh, that's not too bad. Bad at all. It's an interesting effect, but you can see that the LEDs are skewed to the side. I wonder if I can compensate for that by tilting the circuit board in that bracket. Now, uh, hold on. Bear with me again. Oh, this one's out. Right, I'm going to point this at the wall. Please excuse me while I just, uh, so, oh, I can. I reckon I can just nudge that back a tiny little bit. Mumble, mumble, mumble. That doesn't look too bad. How's this? Is this uh, bring it more centred? Uh, no, that's actually worse. I think I need to. I think I need to do some experimentation. One moment. 
Yeah, that worked a lot better. So I've got it in one of the original slots, but this one is just cranked one slot back because it's got multiple positions so they could put the circuit board into the correct focal length for the lens. So I'm going to put this back together again and show you as it's supposed to be seen with a bit of haze going through the air so that the beams are maybe shimmering in the haze. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. It's certainly the moment in the wall. It's producing a series of quite bright dots. Um, it didn't look so good at an angle down onto the bench versus the wall. So it's just the, the angle of instance, I guess, really, and the sort of range of that. So I'm going to put this cover together and then I'll show you the resultant effect. And this is pretty much the effect I was looking for. Lots of random beams shooting out and just doing their own thing. It's just basically a whole splatter of these undulating beams. It's a good effect. I like that. It's achieving pretty much what I was expecting, but it's actually doing it better than I was expecting. It's nice and bright for such a low power, and it can be run from a USB power bank for a prolonged period of time. Yeah, that's a good result. I like that.